Everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Adobe Live. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez, and with me today is the amazing Idara Ekpad. How's it going, Idara? It's going well, Jesus. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, and it's great to see a lot of familiar faces in the chat. I see Andreas, I see Robert, Anika. Thank you so much for joining us, Viola. Sean, how's it going? I see the banana in the chat. <laughs> Thanks for posting the bananas. He's, he's making a reference to the banana tool in Photoshop, which is what I tend to have uh, on my Photoshop <laughs> toolbar. So thanks for sharing that in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm watching from the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area in San Ramon, California. How about you, Adara? Where are you streaming from? I am in Phoenix, Arizona, so the hot. Well, it's actually kind of cold right now, so. What does cold mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> I realize it's not cold at all. Cold is anything that's like set low 70s, high 60s. That's like, I'm okay. shivering. Low 70s is cold, <laughs> awesome. Um, I see that Sam Peterson is in the chat. Sam was just doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. So if you haven't already, make sure that you tune, on, uh, you tune in for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges every weekday from 9 a.m. Pacific to 9.30. And also make sure that you check out the uh, new Creative Cloud Express streams every morning as well. This week, we are creating content for Valentine's Day. So if you want to create a Valentine's Day card, make sure that you tune in, uh, tune into those streams. There's another one coming tomorrow at, I believe, 8 a.m. Pacific, if I'm not mistaken, but make sure that you check out the schedule uh, to be sure. So um, today we're going to create cinematic photos with Idara. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Idara, what we're going to learn today, what we're going to see? Yeah, of course. Um, and so as a photographer, I don't remember who called. I think it was maybe um, I was featured somewhere on, YouTube, on a YouTube channel and they described my work as being very cinematic and dreamlike. Um, and one thing for me when I, as a photographer, I oftentimes, I love movies and I love how like tones and the grading that I see in films. And I try to mimic that in my work um, and create like dra dramatic um, edits, things that really like focusing on colors and how colors work together so I can make things pop and really look as kind of cinematic or dreamlike as far as being kind of like hazier, um, having things that kind of like, you know, some colors in my whites, things of that nature. And so um, I'm really excited going over my workflow and just kind of talking about how I really kind of am intentional about my subjects and where I place them, um, especially as far as thinking ahead, as far as where I'm going to be editing. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about, you know, the steps that I take to make something look cinematic in my case, <laughs> what I call cinematic and what I consider to be dreamlike as well. Awesome. It sounds like it's going to be an exciting stream and we're going to learn a lot. Uh, people are, are tuning in from all over the place. We have Robert from snowy Sweden. <laughs> a lot of shout outs to, to Paco who's running the show. Hey, um, snowy Michigan. It looks like a lot of people are from snowy places. We have, a uh, mercurial from vegas where it's also 70 degrees <laughs> awesome but yeah i'm i'm ready to get started whenever you are dar perfect perfect so um i have a couple of photos that i'm going to be focusing on um between today and tomorrow so one of them being from a set that i called brother which focused on humanizing black men and showing you know the connectiveness mm. between black men um and showing that sense of brotherhood that they have with each other so there's some sets from that which are kind of like darker in tones um kind of like just a little bit grungier and darker. And then I also have another set of photos, which I think I even have somewhere on my home screen. I'll have this shot right here. That's a little bit lighter, airy, kind of what I consider to be that dreamlike effect, as well as this shot right here. So we'll go ahead and just pick which one we'll start with. Awesome. Um, I've kind of imported all of them in here. Um, one thing I do want to say is I edit these, I originally edited these photos maybe like a year, year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So it's, I kind of want to challenge myself today to kind of 
feel free and just kind of edit from beginning to end. So we might get a completely different result. Maybe we'll get something similar. I really don't know. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but I think that's the, the exciting part there. Perfect. Also, um, Sam just posted a link to your website and to your Instagram in the chat. So make sure that you click on that so that they can see your work and so they can follow you online. Also, talking about the chat, if you're watching from YouTube, make sure that you go into behands.net slash live. That's behands.net slash live. So we can see your comments. We can't see the YouTube comments, but if you come into Behance and sign in, we will be able to see your comments. So that way you can ask Adara any questions or anything like that. So yeah, make sure to come into behands.net slash live. Cool. Perfect. So I think we'll start with this image. And then if we have time, I'll come back and edit this one as well. Um, one thing about me when I am kind of working with my subjects, planning for my shoots, I really focus on color. Color is a huge part of my sh of my work. I um, mean, within the probably the past year or so, I've tried to focus on color relationships and color theory. So how colors mm -hmm. work together, mm -hmm. um, complement whether they're, you know, there's a complementary relationship, triadic, whatever that might look like. Um, oftentimes I usually go towards complementary because it's just easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you'll see here that you have the red in her dress and the blue, which are complementary colors. So when I was trying to figure out, okay, where am I going to place her? I found that when she stood next to the car, it kind of popped a lot better. So those are going to be my two focus colors in this image. Mm -hmm. I really want the or the red in her dress and the blue in the car to complement each other and pop really well. I think that's what it's going to be really crucial is for that kind of like cinematic effect and then kind of focusing also with dream like i like things to look kind of like i don't want to say maybe hazy if this mm -hmm. is the word airy and hazy and light okay. um and so i kind of want to focus and what i can do with the overall photo and in the whites to kind of add that effect as well awesome so let me ask you a question so yes. um when you're shooting this photo d did you ask the young lady to wear a, dr a red dress or she showed up with a dread a red dress and she you showed up <laughs> okay. she showed up so <laughs> i had an idea of um that of uh, that that she like she'd be wearing dresses and i knew that there was this car but i didn't plan to the t of knowing that she would be wearing a red dress so when mm. we got there i was like oh, okay where am i gonna place you and the blue car <laughs> happened to be sitting there perfect um and which was really perfect in colors there um yeah. and then you'll see here another and i feel like in a lot of my work i tend to do a lot of um, shooting, especially when it comes to darker skin complexions that, mm -hmm. you know, um, black skin that has more of those orange and yellow tones and skin in general does, but mm -hmm. I tend to pair it with blue because I yeah. feel like it works really, really well. You'll also see that in this shot as well. Yeah. Beautiful. So where we'll start off, I always start with my mm -hmm. color profiles. Um, I just kind of look for whichever one I feel like will complement the image or complement mm -hmm. the kind of vibe to start off with. Yeah. So oftentimes I do faithful. Faithful is kind of looking a little meh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, standard is not much difference. By the way, uh, General Kenobi called it uh, happy little accidents, uh, referring to the red dress. <laughs> yes, um, happy little accidents. I, I kind of like this landscape one. It kind of adds a little bit of a, makes it look a little airy there. Sam Peterson has a question. The question yes. is, do you have a favorite or go to complementary color combination? Um, I don't, I would say, I feel like it would probably be this red and blue or again, like this kind of like orangey ish tones with blue. I feel like oftentimes a lot of my work is if I'm shooting with someone with darker skin, if I can include the sky and the blue in the sky in some kind of sort, mm -hmm. you'll also see even the image that was in the thumbnail, you'll see that I made her skin tone very kind of like dark and kind of the orange, The I think the sky was more of a teal. So mm -hmm. I usually kind of do that color combination a lot of times. I love blue and I love making blues very like um, bright, teal. I like the calming effect that it kind of brings. Mm -hmm. um, so I tend to kind of navigate towards anything that will work well with blue. <laughs> I cool. Feel like. All right. So let's see. Uh, I think that's doing too much to start. So let's just start with new faithful because I tend to navigate towards that anyway often. So I'm mm -hmm. going to, let's see, I'm going to keep my exposure is fine. I want to increase my contrast just a little bit. And I just usually start at my basics tools just to see where is a good starting point for my image. So I usually, the one thing that I love to say is just kind of 
I like to just mess around with the sliders until I get something that's like, okay, that's a decent starting point Mm -hmm. uh, for my image. I usually also increase my temperature, but I don't want to do too much because obviously that makes her look, um, I don't want to impact her skin tone. So I'll just Mm -hmm. increase that a little bit. And so you'll see there, that's already a little difference between the two images. Um, I'm going to skip. Sometimes I do come down to the tone curve and maybe it bring up my shadows a bit and maybe a bit of the darks. Um, I think what I will do in HSL, this is where I focus. I usually focus on these two areas for colors um, and then just kind of seeing where, playing around to see what I can get in Lightroom. And then I go into Photoshop where I feel like I have a little bit more freedom to target certain Mm. colors um, or make sure that like, if I'm adding red, if I really want her red to, if I really want her dress to be like this fiery red color, I also want to make sure I'm not, you know, impacting the red in her skin or even the red in her hair. So I like Photoshop to be able to target um, and just target specific components of my image. So is it fair to say that your workflow is you do say 80% in Lightroom and then the remaining 20 or so percent in Photoshop where you can fine tune those Mm -hmm. difficult to reach areas? I would say so. Um, It's just kind of, well, I'll probably say more so like 70, 30. So I kind of get like the bulk of like it Mm -hmm. done here, but then in Photoshop, I really kind of enhance it more. So yeah, I would say that's the kind of ratio between the two. For example, if I wanted her to increase the saturation in her in her dress, I might do that a little bit, not too much. Um, if I wanted to change the hue as well, I could do that, but you can see how now it's impacting mm. her skin, her mm-hmm. hair, which I don't want. Maybe if I wanted this color dress, I could change that later, but I also don't like the way it looks with the blue. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna keep that at zero actually. Um, sometimes I'll mess with luminance if I want to make something a little bit darker or um, brighter, but I think we're gonna, I might do that in a little bit for orange for her skin. Do you tend to do your cropping in Photoshop once you've done everything else or do you do you do it in Lightroom and then you're, you move on I to Photoshop? I do it in Light. yeah, I kind of do it in Lightroom. Um, okay. And so if I was going to like Instagram, I can do eight by 10 mm-hmm. and crop the image if I wanted to. Um, sometimes what I usually do is cropping is usually the last thing that I do. Um, what I, my workflow is like, I start in Lightroom, export and send to Photoshop, and then I come back to Lightroom. So, um, I kind of do my last minute finishing touches as far as sharpening and, um, cropping in Lightroom before I export. Mm. And I kind of like doing that just because I can easily go back and it'll create a new file for me. So then I can look where I started and where I'm at, um, instead of um, looking in Photoshop where it's kind of carrying over the Lightroom effects that I had already done. I don't get to see that initial raw image right side by side. So let's see, what else do I wanna do? And then sometimes I do really like the color grading tool in Lightroom. Sometimes I'll mess with it, sometimes I won't. It'll just kind of be, um, I'll just kind of play around with it. And then if I don't like it, then I'll leave it alone. Um, let's see if there's anything I want to do in here. Mm, maybe not. Mm. <laughs> and it's more so again, just that trial and error again, like being able, I really like just the freedom of being able to add colors to my shadows, highlights, or my midtones. Mm-hmm. I don't really have much of a science behind it. I just go based off of what I find appealing to right. my eye. And that's such a great tool. If I'm not mistaken, it's what about a year old now? Uh, mm-hmm. Photo, photo uh, Max twenty twenty one or twenty twenty. I don't recall, but either or twenty twenty one, I believe, is when they released this tool, and it's mm-hmm. super amazing. Oh, I love it! When as soon as it came in, I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it made color grading a lot easier. Um, I actually am really happy with this thus far. I went into my highlights and added a little bit green. I kind of feel like it's giving like a little vintage tone. I kind of got ahead of myself because it's adding some color into the whites, obviously adding that green into the highlights, which is what I wanted to do in Photoshop, but I got to do that now. So that's perfectly fine. Sure. So we're going to go ahead. I think I'm good with where we're at with this image. You'll see here, this is the before, this is the after. And I'm going to right click, edit in and send it to Photoshop. And we're going to continue the magic there. So perfect. Here we are. Um, 
first thing that I always do in Photoshop is duplicate my layer. Um, you can either do that if I'm on, on a Mac, so I'm using Command J, but you can also just kind of carry it down here to the little plus sign mm -hmm. and it'll duplicate your layer. Um, important to do that just to make sure that if you make a mistake, <laughs> you're not doomed and you can kind of um, counter, kind of course correct if need be. Mm -hmm. um, I usually do a frequency separation, but because this isn't, isn't one of those like up close portraits that I have, I'm not really worried about, you can't really see if there's any blemishes or anything on her skin. So I'm just gonna leave that be. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a dodge and burn action, which is something that I use every now and then. Oh shoot, hold on. There we go. Perfect. So I kind of like to focus on, you know, bringing out the highlight, like highlighting certain areas of her face and skin um, that are a, lot, a bit brighter and then like adding that contrast or that that burn to the outer areas of her face, maybe some parts of her legs and things like that, just to add a little bit more contrast there. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to dodging. And I'm gonna start with my brush too. I think that should be fine on white. I keep my opacity low because if it's not, it's gonna just turn the whole thing white, which we don't want. So let me go ahead and see if I can scroll in. Oh, this does not wanna work for me. Oh, there we go. Yes, it does. Sam okay. says he likes the vintage looking tint. Yeah, I Yay. like it as well, Sam. Hey, me too, Sam. Oh, it was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> a happy little accident. A happy little accident. And that's one thing I love about um, editing is that I can really, I try to give myself grace when mm -hmm. I edit. Um, I just feel like a lot of times, like I might have an idea of like, okay, this person, like in this photo, I knew that like, you know, this orangey red hat would look really good with the green. And so I really want this to pop mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm intentional as far as that goes, but sometimes it's just like vibes, whatever I'm feeling in the moment, um, as far as like, you know, if I want something to look vintage or look a little bit darker or airy, it's just kind of like happy accidents. Do you edit while listening to music? Oh yeah. And does I, that I, affect your art? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I do have to listen. Test that out. <laughs> yeah, I have to test that out because I want to know, like, if if there's a certain type or genre I'm listening to, do I edit a certain way? Mm -hmm. Or I just know that when I'm listening to music, it just I have like this laser focus. So if I'm in like this room, there'll be if anyone if that door is closed, like I can't even. I don't even like recognize that anybody else could be in the house. I'm just so laser focused. Mm -hmm. Either that or I'll put like an audio book or some music or like a, a YouTube show or YouTube or a Netflix show that I don't really care about listening to right. just to have some background noise. Right. Um, but that's a good point. I wonder if that would impact my editing. What kind of music do you listen to while you're working usually? Um, a lot of Afrobeats. So I'm Nigerian, mm. so I tend to listen to a lot oh, of Afrobeats cool. that give me kind of, that make me feel really, um, I don't know, they just give me a lot of like energy while I'm editing. So I do that a lot. Awesome. Well, we have uh, Eduwumi, I believe it's pronounced, in the chat, watching with love from Nigeria. Oh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And then somebody just asked in the chat, you know, what kind of music do you like? And so I guess you just replied. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Nigerian. I love, uh, so Afrobeats. And then I also love like R&B too. I'm in like a, like kind of, not sad, but like, like that heartache kind of feeling mm -hmm. yeah, R&B yeah. music really comes into, comes clutch in that sense. So we did a little bit of dodging Brittany real quickly. As you can see, like her face kind of comes out a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, her leg pops. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that she looked a little bit, that she popped a little bit more, especially so, with her eyes. Yeah, for those of, in the chat that are not familiar with dodging and burning, do you mind just giving us a quick uh, explanation of what that means? Yeah, so the way that I kind of think of it is when I'm dodging an area, that's an area that I want to bring out more. And when I'm um, burning something, it's something I want to pull back. So I okay. like to, re I relate it to, and this is more so when I'm dodging and burning on the, on the face or on the skin, I tend to, there's certain areas of the face or the skin that I want to have pop more. Mm. Like, um, so I'll bring, I'll probably 
dodge those. And then if I want to pull back to add a bit more contrast or dimension, I'll burn in those other areas. So I relate cool. it to when I'm doing my makeup, right? Oh, that's um, a really good way of, <laughs> yeah. of relating it. Yeah. Yeah. So, cause like my, I me mean, dodging my face is using like concealer of a mm. lighter tone underneath my eyes, my forehead, bridge of my nose. And those are the areas that I want to conceal and bring out more and make them mm -hmm. brighter. And then when you're contouring your face, I'm doing that around the perimeter of my face because I want it things to appear smaller or to pull back mm -hmm. a bit more and add that dimension to my face instead of everything looking so flat. Right. Um, so that's what I usually relate it to because I'm like, oh, it's like doing my makeup. So I always start <laughs> with the face and dodging and like underneath the eyes, the bridge of the nose, the lip area, even the, the, mm -hmm. the chin, forehead. And then if I, especially when I'm doing portraits, this is when I do a lot of the dodging burning. And then... I'll burn around the core perimeter of the face, cheekbone area to make add more dimension to the overall face. But not cool. wanting to do it too much to where like you're altering the way somebody mm -hmm. looks or making them look scary in any kind of way, just kind of enhancing what's already there. That's a great way of putting it, enhancing what's already there. Yes. So you'll see that we kind of, and I really liked her eyes, so I kind of wanted them to mm. pop a little bit more. So now that that's done, I tend to start in selective color. When I was introduced to selective color, it was a game changer for my entire workflow. Mm -hmm. um, just because I really love that you can pick a specific color. So if I started in, in red and then impact, then like impact the reds in the photo in different ways. So if I wanted to like focus on cyan, if I wanted to add more blue to the reds, I could. If I wanted to remove it, it'll make something redder. Um, same thing with magenta. I think adding, moving it to the right adds purple, adds magenta, and then moving it to left adds that like yellow. Um, yellow I'm adding, removing, I'm adding magenta. And so I just like how you can just play around with the overall tones and just kind of get really cool results. So I tend to start off like in reds and yellows. Um, in this case, we might do reds for the dress. Um, red and yellow for the dress, or red for the dress, and then red and yellow looking at skin tone. So you tend to separate those into two separate layers. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I'm probably gonna come down to science as well um, to impact the blue in the car. And then we'll look at whites and blacks. Those are ten, kind of like the areas that I always focus on usually for all of my photos. Makes total sense. Beautiful, so if I want to move down my science, I'm adding more red. So you can see that dress kind of pops more, which I really like. I don't want to look like that. Like that. Okay, I think I like that thus far for her dress. Cool. I think I'm also gonna come in here and go to my eraser tool just to go over her face and skin, just to make sure that that doesn't impact. Oh my goodness, I keep moving everything over, sorry. <laughs> so I'm just gonna come in to her face and I can even zoom in more and mm -hmm. press the back, um, I think it's a backslash, so that way I can see what I am painting mm -hmm. in. Good tip there, by the way. Yes, it makes it so much easier, to, cause especially when I'm looking at her face and her hair. I want to make sure that in her dress, they're so close to each other that I want to make sure that I'm actually painting the area that I want to paint. Mm -hmm. So. So basically anything that is in, in that you're painting in red or what looks the red overlays areas that will not be affected by mm -hmm. the adjustments that you make on the exactly. selective color adjustment layer. Yes, exactly. And this is again, why I love um, using Photoshop and using selective color because as you saw in the when I we were looking in Lightroom, if I were to increase the reds on the slider, mm -hmm. whether that be hue saturation or whatever, it's gonna impact everywhere that there's a red in the photo. And I just like being able to target and say, I don't want it to touch your skin. I don't want it to touch anything else that might be red. Maybe there's a, like in this case, there's a dress, or maybe I wanted to change the color of something else that may have been red in the photo. And I just mm -hmm. want to target that one thing. I like that I can add the adjustment layer and then come in and erase, or just kind of make sure that it's painted in on the right spot so that it's not impacting anything else mm -hmm. in the photo. So it's just a lot more freedom that you get in Photoshop. So once I, 
I was afraid of Photoshop when I first started and I still am because I think there's like, not that I'm afraid, but there's so much to learn and understand. Um, but I just kind of gave myself the freedom to play around and um, I went to YouTube University <laughs> so that I could learn more about what, um, how I can just further improve my photos. I got a little spillover on her dress. I think I can't really tell. Oh, I did. Hold on. So I just changed this it's back difficult to black. When it's, when it's um, red on red. Red on red, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me zoom out of this. I think it might have also done something. No, not much to her hair. So I'm going to leave that dress as is right now. Put that back in full screen. I'm going to come back and add another selective color layer. Um, I think I'll start in go to yellows and see what I can do for her skin. For skin tones, are you looking for a specific color or something that matches the image? Like how do you determine what a good quote unquote skin tone is? Um, that's a good question. I often, I, I tr one thing I try to do, I, I try not to make it, I always want to like keep it as close to the model's like original skin tone if I can, mm -hmm. just because I never want someone to look too off of that. Um, and I also like skin to look, not skin to look, but I, I tend to like things that are a bit warmer. Mm -hmm. So I usually feel like I'm navigating towards that, but making sure again that it's not um, too much of a different from difference from their original um, undertones that they have. I don't want anyone who might be a little bit I don't know, have like pinkish green or undertones looking like really yellow orangey. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. want to be mindful of that, but I do tend to like more so warmer tones in general. You ever walking down the street and look at someone and say, oh my God, you have great skin. I got to get a picture of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Especially when I first started shooting um, as a photographer, I started my senior year of high school and it was really important for me to learn how to I started shooting because a lot of my friends felt like they didn't have photographers that could shoot and edit their skin well. Mm. Um, and that was a huge thing um, as far as just being comfortable, but just knowing that like, okay, I'm not gonna, I think a lot of a lot of people, and this is this is no no kind of hit to their workflow, but a lot of people use presets that might not work on certain skin tones, mm -hmm. especially for grad photos and those large, you know, those things that you might yeah. be able to copy paste effects, mm -hmm. but you mindful of like something that might work for a certain skin tone won't work for another right. or you might need to make certain adjustments and so it was really important for me as a photographer um, especially being a black woman as well to make sure that I could capture our skin well mm -hmm. um, everyone's skin but making sure that I could provide that service because I knew that there was a need in my area right. for right. that um, so I just feel like that was always a huge part of my overall workflow was like can I just make sure that like we look, our melanin looks good. <laughs> and we're not looking too, or we're not looking orange. We're not looking like Oompa Loompas. We're looking <laughs> like our natural selves, just a little enhanced. So we I have a, a question in the chat. Um, yes. I'm just, uh, this is from Old Car, I believe the person's name is pronounced. I am mm -hmm. just starting with color grading and it's not easy for me. Selective color, the selective color tool is useful, but hard at this stage, how would you advise to study color so color grading can become easier? Mm, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos. I always go back to YouTube um, just because there are experts that can explain things better than I can. <laughs> um, and I was just able to understand how like colors just work in general. And once I understood that, I it kind of helped me sometimes it kind of helped me just focus on like what I know will make my image look good and what wouldn't make my image look nice. So I would start there just looking for resources. And I think not trying to over compliment it, um, over complicated either. Like I tend to navigate towards, like, I don't like to do too much with my colors. Um, I just try to kind of pick and target. Okay. I know I want certain areas to look a certain way, but I don't want it to be too crazy. Um, and then another thing is just kind of like play around. A lot of it is just play around and see what you like. I think selected col color, I didn't really understand the tool and I was just like, what's going on? And I just started playing around with it until I got something that I liked. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I just kind of asked myself, okay, why am I targeting certain colors? So I know that again, reds and yellows are more so for the skin. So if I'm doing portraits, I know I'm focusing on those two to kind of make sure I'm getting the skin tone that I want. And I'm just kind of like paying it as I'm sliding, I'm just paying attention to the effect and the impact that it's having on my image. Um, so just kind of playing around and just kind of getting comfortable with making those mistakes um, and just kind of na that'll help you navigate to where you'll feel more comfortable with the tool. Um, so those are probably the two things that I would say, just watch YouTube videos um, that are on the topic and then just give yourself the grace to just play around and do anything you can do in the, in the app. Um, I think that kind of will help you feel a little bit more comfortable with um, color grading in general. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, it's like anything else. You need um, a little bit of, of learning, like you said, YouTube, and then a little bit of practice. Like you mm -hmm. said, feel free to go in there and allow, give yourself the freedom to experiment. Exactly. But it's, I think it's that easy as you put, uh, yeah. put it. So very nice. Yep. I um, sometimes I just sit here and, and the one reason why I was really excited to re-edit this photo was because sometimes I challenge myself and see, okay, a year ago or however mm -hmm. long, like this image I edited maybe a year, maybe almost two years ago, if I'm being fully mm -hmm. honest. Um, so being able to re-edit it now with things that I've learned through practicing, through the videos and education that I've, I've done, I can now be like, okay, this is what I can see the direct impact of my work. So sometimes doing something like that um, could be really, really helpful because I can see my growth in editing and see, okay, how's my style changed? Do I like a certain, like certain tone, are there certain tones or looks that I tend to navigate more so towards now than I did earlier in my career? Um, and so I always had to do like that pulse, pulse check to see where I'm at. Um, by the way, Olkar says, thank you for, for answering their question. Of course. So I think I'm going to come into my blues now. I think I'm fine. So this is what we've done so far. We took care of the reds. We did add a little bit to her hair, which I was fine with. Mm -hmm. I like that fire, like fiery red color. And then we did that thus far. I'm going to come into our cyans for that blue in the car. I really want this blue to be like almost like teal. I don't know what it is about the color teal that's just so beautiful to me. And it also works that car. I feel the teal, uh, mm -hmm. the color teal on those kind of cars look nice. Oh, absolutely. I get the, the Cuba vibe from the teal <laughs> and those yeah, kind of cars. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually, um, you know, it's funny. Like, I think this hotel had like a Cuba theme. Mm. And it's so... <laughs> That actually, that, that makes perfect sense there. And so is, you'll, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to ask, and is this a hotel in where you're from in mm -hmm. Arizona? Yeah, cool. this is a hotel in Scottsdale, um, which was, they're actually really nice. They're not, I think they're called the Scott Resort. Um, and I think they're like this Cuba themed um, hotel. And the one thing that was really nice is like some locations, they're like, oh, you need a permit or you can't shoot here unless you book. Da, 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 da. We just showed up and started shooting and, and everyone was like, no one said anything, <laughs> which was nice. <laughs> Sometimes I just kind of do and I ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> if ask I for get for business, forgiveness instead of permission. Yes, exactly. I'm like, oh, I could always, I mean, what are they going to do? They're just going to say, hey, can you leave? Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. leave. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see that the car is a bit, um, it's more teal than that blue, which I don't know, I just really love. So I increased my science for that, um, took out the, reduced the magenta there to make that more teal. And then I added a little bit of that yellow in there too. And I increased the blacks to make it a little darker. I'm good there. I'm going to come back. So I spent a lot of time in selective color. That's why I was like, when, when I'm looking at my workflow, like the percentage, I feel like when I do get in Photoshop, a large percentage of it is in selective color. And then I might play around with like color feel or like certain other things to just see what I can add. But I tend to spend a lot of time here. So I'm going to focus on the whites now. I really want it to have that vintage. Yeah, I like that there. And do I want to remove the yellow or do I want to add? The, I think I want to remove the yellow. I feel like that makes her pop a bit more. So you can see the difference in the white in the photo, which I really like thus far. And then the last thing that I 
usually do i sometimes come down to blacks i think it's cool to be able to add some color to your the the blacks in your photos sometimes i don't but i might just kind of play around with the sliders and see what colors i get and then i usually just reduce the opacity or the fill mm -hmm. so it's not like as harsh as it was originally do, 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 do. i think that's okay that's far so let me close that i'm gonna group those together so we can see what we've done so far so you can see that's the difference mm -hmm. before and after of where we left off in photo and lightroom and what we were able to do in photoshop thus far so let's see what else do i want to do um <laughs> Sometimes another way that I could have impacted the dress is I'll, I might have gone into hue and saturation and gone to reds and then I can, you know, have more mm -hmm. range to do whatever I wanted. And then if I wanted to, again, make sure it was just impacting the dress, I could invert the layer and paint in the dress or I could just kind of, I probably would do that, I would invert the layer so I'm not um, painting everything else in the image. I would invert it so then and just paint in the dress um, so that it wouldn't impact anything else. So. Mm -hmm. Let's see, do I want to do anything? Not really. I think our red is like looking as fire. Ooh, I like that. I like how, I just like it so like in your face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna take it off her hair too because I don't want it. Oh, that. don't want it, her hair any. But if I do kind of want that dress a bit more. And it sounds like you were using a mouse. Yes. Oh, You're not a, a Wacom person? So here's the thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually do have a Wacom tablet, mm -hmm. but I struggle with it mm -hmm. because like, I can't see, I can't look at the tablet and see what I'm doing. I have to like, my hand has to coordinate with the screen and I find it very difficult. Yeah. What I do like to do, and I don't know why I didn't do this today, I'll probably set up for tomorrow, I think my iPad might be dead, is I will use my iPad as a second monitor. Mm -hmm. And then that way, well, I can't necessarily, I don't think I can, it'll show up on both screens if I do it that way. But sometimes I'll edit on my iPad, mm -hmm. um, it's using a second monitor and just drag Photoshop over. That way I can use the Apple Pencil to just do mm -hmm. all of that. Right. And it, it's easier because I can just, I can see right. <laughs> where my pencil is touching. Whereas I feel with the Wacom tablet, I'm like playing a guessing game mm -hmm. and think I'm touching her face, but I'm not touching her face. I'm doing something else. Right, so I right. haven't mastered that. I do have one, but I've not mastered that. Um, so I am struggling with a mouse. Yeah. I do have a trackpad too, but eh. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally feel you there. I, I, I feel that I've become like a master calligrapher, so to speak with, with the mouse, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I do use that. I force myself to, to learn the, the tablet, but I feel that instinctively I go to the mouse and start yeah. editing with the mouse. Exactly. I think that's quite interesting. I just. I really, when I, when I bought that tablet, I was excited. And then I found myself <laughs> never <laughs> reaching for it, <laughs> which then I was like, dang, well, like, I feel like I just wasted money on it, but hey, mm -hmm. at least one day I'll learn it. For one sure. day. What kind of work do you shoot and edit? Me? Well, I don't really, I'm not a photographer, so I'm a designer. Oh. So it's mostly compositing oh. um, work that I do. Um, I recently, um, big shout outs to my good friend, uh, Lisa Carney, who, um, some of you people in the chat know she designs movie posters and, oh, wow. uh, she recently got me a gig to, um, edit a movie poster or a TV show oh, for wow. uh, good Sam on CBS. Never seen the mm -hmm. show, but, but I did the poster. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. so that's one of the latest, latest things that I've, I've done that doesn't involve training. Cause most of my work is now training, but, um, that's my latest you know, oh, that's client exciting. type of work. That's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. I know that. I I think I've only watched a couple episodes of Good Sam. So I, I oh, know okay. I know what you're referring to. <laughs> well, let me know if it's any good. <laughs> <laughs> but when I remember a yes, I just can't remember why I didn't continue. I think I com sometimes commit to too many shows. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was just when I saw on TV at one moment and I watched... Um, but didn't want to commit too much to it. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I think that was a waste because I think I'm, I ended up just not liking how bright that was. It was doing too much to my eyes. So we're good so far. What else do I want to do? Sometimes I go and add a solid color. Mm -hmm. I can't necessarily explain why I do that. <laughs> I just know that sometimes if I want to add in, if I want something like warmer, I might come in more of that yellowish orange and then I might change it to light in or I think oftentimes I do screen mm -hmm. to add that and then I reduce the opacity just to make it the image a bit more warm cool you did say you like the warm tones yeah I do I don't know what it is <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy with that image thus far. So the one thing that I also want to do is I'm going to clean up. I don't want this little leaf here on the ground. So I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to come down here. Mm. I was going to say you're in Arizona. You have to like the warmth. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny because when I finished college, I was like, oh, I really want to like move out of Arizona. But I just love the weather here. Mm. I don't have to, we don't have to deal with like any kind of like natural disasters or cold weather. Like I don't do the mm -hmm. cold. I've never seen snow. I've seen it falling in Flagstaff because we do get snow up north. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never like experienced like waking up and shoveling snow or <laughs> um, anything like that. I think that would give me, that would be too much for me to handle. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. I'm not a snow person either. Yeah, it's just, it's just, eh. To each their own. <laughs> it's not for me. I do really want to experience it though. I would love to be able to go and stay in the snow, um, just to experience it once. But as far as life and living, I, I don't think I, I could ever really do that. Bliss Golden Rose is saying, I love the snow. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there snow where you live? Let up, yeah, let us know in the chat. Yes, is there any snow, snow where you live? Where, where do you guys live? Is there snow? And how does that make you yeah. feel? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sometimes I might come into, I don't think I need to do anything else. Like levels, my, ooh, no, 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 I don't want that. That was, nah, I don't like any. I like the, it more kind of faded. So I'm going to leave levels alone. I think I'm happy with this image thus far. The one thing that I do like to do or want to do with this image, sometimes I will duplicate the layer again and I will come up here to filter um, blur and motion blur where it kind of adds this mm. motion around it. And I really like to do that and then I'll come and I think I'll come to which one is it screen yes so and then I'm gonna go ahead and reduce opacity and so it kind of make adds that though I really like the brightness and the whiteness I know this is really really white over here but you know I don't mind it mm -hmm. I'm gonna come and take it off her skin though because I want don't want her to experience that. Oh, I think I kind of like the spill on her hair. That's part of that that dreamy look that you're going mm -hmm. for. Yeah, I just like that kind of like dreamy, hazy kind of like almost like you're walking in front of the sun, like brightness behind mm -hmm. you um, look. So I'm going to take it off of her skin because I don't want it to, I don't want to fill it there. And this is just me being lazy and not wanting to be precise but hey oh so my god see. oh sorry go ahead sorry what, what happened oh, oh i was no. gonna say that's the that's that's the before and after there of of that effect uh, i'm sorry i just almost fell over my my chair because I, I read a comment by bliss golden rose uh bliss said i love watching the snowfall and i and usually I get out and clean my car and maybe a neighbor's car or two. Oh, wow. <laughs> if the snow is fluffy enough, I can't imagine me going out and just cleaning the neighbor's cars. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't imagine either, but wow. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I think I am happy with this thus 
far. I'm gonna merge these two together. I wonder if I can just, this is bothering me here. I don't like, I'd rather mm -hmm. just let that be white. Mm -hmm. And then now it's bothering me more because it's like a white white and it's not like, hmm. See, once you start, Let's see. Man, I think I'll just I'll manage. What did I do? I'm gonna merge this again. Get that over again. And, uh, right now, you're just trying to figure out if you want to keep the foliage in the background, or yeah, or if I wanted to take it out. Mm -hmm. I think I want to take it out. I think it was just bothering me that I was just seeing like, mm. hmm. What do you guys think? Let us know in the chat. On yeah. or off? On or off? Because I feel like it's just bothering me <laughs> the way it's just like <laughs> peeking through it. Because it's not really there. It's not, I don't think it's adding much. Mm -hmm. I do like the little bit of, of green that I'm seeing, but it's like, why are you there? Yeah. The, I, I, my opinion is maybe off. You know what the thing is? I don't know if there's a wall or something, but I can see a sharp line and it kind of looks like an editing mistake. You know right? I, mean? I agree. That's why like this is bothering me. And then uh, it looks like a, uh, there's got to be something back there that's just making that line. Yeah. Well, we're going to leave that for today. So, we'll, <laughs> mm, okay. But at least color wise, I think I'm happy with this. Laura's saying she likes it without it. Without the, without yeah. it. Yeah, so like this, all white. Like okay, that. okay. I think I agree. Cause it's just like, why? What's going on right there? Like, did you forget to <laughs> clone mm -hmm. that out? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing that I did like to do, this is again, me just being extra. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to add some stars. It was giving me that like, now it's giving me this like Hollywood mm. vibe, you know, vintage Hollywood. So I'm going to yeah. come here. I do have a, a star brush. I don't remember where I got it from. I think I got it somewhere from YouTube or somewhere on Google. I think I just Googled like star brushes and found a free pack of them. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I, I also um, created a new layer. That way I could just, if I don't like it, I could delete it instead of doing it right on the um, the copy of the photo. And this should be white. And no, is it? Oh, it's I'm on the eraser or I'm on the clone stamp. That's why I was like, wait. <laughs> okay, so yeah, make sure you're on brush. Actually, let me right. go and change this too so that I'm not. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here. Make sure you're on your brush. Then you can click on the star. And then I have it on white. I'm gonna increase the opacity a bit. Let's just do 50% to start and see what that looks like. Uh, that's, let's go to 100%. <laughs> and and thanks I... for posting in, in the chat, Sam, Idara's website and Instagram. So if you guys want to check out Idara's Instagram, make sure to click the link in the chat. Please do. I just Bliss. Like to... Bliss wrote team wrong tool and wrong layer. We rule. <laughs> yeah, I just it's always sometimes I get like a little subconscious because I'm like, it's just I do the wrong thing that gives me the result I want. Yeah. <laughs> One day I feel like I will be in like more of a master in all of this. But until that day, I think I'm OK. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the end of the day, what matters is the picture that comes out for your client on Instagram, exactly. your portfolio, your website, whatever it is. Exactly. And so all I, I just want to make sure that whatever I'm delivering to them, they like, um, and I am happy with as well. And mm -hmm. so however, and I think there's multiple ways to get to your result too. You don't always have to follow a certain like route to get to a result. So I think it's kind of, again, giving yourself that grace to just create and then you know, see what you're able to come up with. All right, I think I am happy with this image thus far. So I'm gonna take off these layers so you guys can see 
what we did in Photoshop. And then we'll go back and we can see what that before and after looks like in Lightroom as well. So this was with the adjustments in Lightroom. I did, um, so this is including the dodging and burning and then that screen layer that I did. This is cleaning up the background. This is adding those stars just to be a little extra there. Um, okay, here's the dodging and burning. So you see that there. And then there's our color grade. Before and after. Nice. So what I usually do is I save it. Mm -hmm. I probably should go file save, but <laughs> I save it. And then I really like how Lightroom and Photoshop work together because then I could just, it just will automatically go straight back into to Lightroom and I can really see clearly like the before and after. And if there's anything that I want to change, I can easily go back and reopen the TIFF file to be able to do that. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to erase. So that's a before and that's her after. Wow. Isn't, yeah. a way to, isn't there a way to put them side by side? There you go. Uh oh. Oh, drag and drop. There we go. What the heck? Thought I did it. Okay. Oh, maybe. There we go. There you, are. There you are. So you can see that is the before and after of our photo. I, I really like the color. I don't know. There's something about teal that's mm -hmm. just so like vintage and calming for me. Um, I like how her red's a little bit, um, I think there's like almost like a little orange tint to the red too. Oh, I think mm -hmm. there's a, everything's very kind of warm in general. Um, and then I really love to, I think, especially when I'm shooting with a lot of whites, I, it's very often that I don't keep the whites pure. Mm -hmm. I just really always like to kind of add some color, especially when I'm going for that like vintage vibe, adding like a yellow or a green or something that sort into the whites really helps the image pop a bit more. But that is our final image. Definitely. And I really like the, uh, what did you call them? Star sparkles? Yeah. That <laughs> Add a little pizzazz, something yeah. subtle, something that's not like, oh, in yeah. your face, but it's it's nice and, and it's there. Nice. So I am a fan of this. And if I pull up my website, you'll see how different the original edit was. Oh yeah, so let's let check see. it out. And I'm guessing uh, the first time you did it, you were not explaining it live to a bunch of people. Yeah, nope. <laughs> so this is the original one here. Yeah. Um, oh, so you I decided to keep the uh, the uh, foliage in that one. Mm hmm. Yeah, I decided to keep it there. Now it's bothering me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then this is the version that we just created today. So nice. you can see that I'm, I kept it there. You can see her hair. It's not as fit, like white and faded. Mm -hmm. um, I think also skin wise, I didn't go as dark as I did here. Yeah. So it's just, again, just being able to just challenge yourself and see what you navigate towards. And maybe this is a different, maybe it's because I'm editing in front of you guys that I did something different. <laughs> um, but I just think it's cool to really see what different looks you can get for photos by just kind of playing around. Yeah, definitely. It, it's happened to me when I've done streams and I'll remember like the day after, like, oh my God, I forgot to show whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, I hope I don't forget to do something, but yeah. it's usually the workflows tends to stay the same. Um, I might incorporate like, like different adjustments that like sometimes I might, and if I go back here, I might go into another adjustment layer that I love to use is, uh, channel mixer i cannot describe it i do not know for the life of me why it does what it does but when one of my friends he was showing me this tool and he always said that he always goes to blues and he'll bring down the blues to about like 40 50 percent and bring down bring up the greens and i just love the kind of color like the tone that it adds there to the photo mm -hmm. so sometimes i might do that and maybe i like will come back in and erase like anything else and I don't like that how it looks but I could erase anything I didn't want I might want it to impact my background of the photo or something like that so I really like that to see what kind of tones I can get there and then I also use color lookup a lot of the times too depending on the 
photo there was one specific let that i used that adobe has in here i can't remember which one I think if i have to guess you probably like candlelight or something like that i think so ah uh, yeah and then i would just kind of come in i could either change the like the i can change it to like i don't know I could just change it and then like reduce the opacity and the mm -hmm. the fill and then see what that does to my photo as well. So I just really like how there's just so many different adjustment layers here and it's just a matter of just playing around. And for me, it's a matter of just playing around to get what I want. But uh, I always tend to start with selective color just because I know selective color and sometimes human saturation, it will just let me kind of get the targeted colors that I want to make sure that, are, that the, these certain colors are popping and how, or of a certain like hue or tone. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, so I'm not gonna, Well, I had already saved it, so we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm like, I should just make sure I'm doing file saves. So there's that one. Next, so we can go ahead and we have time, obviously, we have another like hour or so to edit. Yeah. Let's see. Just about. So we have this photo. So this was actually from a, one of my close friends. It was her engagement photo. So you can see her ring right here. <laughs> um, and we have, um, I think she really wanted to do like, um, it was a really dramatic shoot, but I really love the way the photos came out. We had one of her friends as a designer. So he designed this dress for her. Um, oh, and then, cool. and we went to um, just like the mountains, I felt like just kind of giving like that queen kind of vibe, like I'm the ruler of the land <laughs> <laughs> type of thing. Um, and so I really liked the rock. Again, I love the, I really wanted the sky. I always, I think another thing I tend to do in all my photos, if it's not like a portrait, I always like to have a lot of negative space. I don't know why it just kind of adds, it's just, I don't know if it's the way my eyes lead up or down. I don't know what it is, but I used to, I usually like to leave a bit of negative space. Um, I might crop it, um, even if I wanted to crop it just a little bit, but in most parts, I tend to, I tend to keep it the same. So if I wanted to crop it, I might, I could do that, but I still again want mm -hmm. a bit of negative space there. So I think we'll start with this image just because I think I'll do like some of the same similar things. I'm gonna crop this first just because I want to. I can't remember, I think for this image, I used a preset that I made and that always freaks me out because in this case, I'm like, how did I, what did I do in that preset? I couldn't tell you, but we're just gonna edit from scratch and see what we can get. So I added my faithful camera profile. I'm gonna bring up the temperature just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I bring up the shadows because I don't want too much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> When add clarity, I don't know what clarity necessarily does. I just like how it just kind of sharpens the image a bit more and tightens it up. So I tend to add a little bit of that. I'm gonna come here. Oh no, I don't want that bright at all. Bring down the light in the highlights. Of... I'll keep the highlights. Of... I'm gonna bring it down just a tad bit. And then shadows. Sometimes I do really, especially when I shoot, um, when I shoot in direct sunlight, I really, really love um, sh the shadows that they create. So I really want to make sure like her hand here, the shadow from her hand, I want it to be emphasized so you can really see that shadow there. So that's really nice. Olgar is asking, what white balance settings do you use in camera for portraits? Oh, that is a good question. Ah, what what do I use? I think I just have it set. I have it set and I don't remember what I have it set to, if I'm being fully, completely honest. <laughs> like I think I just like, once I set it, I know I don't shoot in like 
I have it set to a certain um, setting. I just can't remember where what it is. It's like eight that eight something, eight eighty five hundred, maybe eighty somewhere in that realm. Um, and so I just kind of keep it set in camera. But I feel like I always come back and like this is something that I rely too much on in of my on my post editing. Mm -hmm. because I know I can just go back and change it. So if I feel like it's I shot it too warm or I'm trying to be better now about like getting a close result in camera. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't remember the exact setting that I used Fair or enough. I tend to use. Dwayne is saying, wow, lovely uh, vantage points, blue sky and highlights. Exactly. So <laughs> this, so we did a little bit thus far. I do know the blue is what I want to target in mm -hmm. this photo, but what I want to be mindful of is um, the blue in her dress and the blue in the sky. Um, I don't want to change, especially being like respectful, mindful of the artist. I don't want to change the colors in the dress too much to where it doesn't look like the actual dress itself. But I also want to make sure that I'm adding, you know, even if it's, just, it's a tad different, I don't want to do anything that's too drastic like mm -hmm. that, um, right. that's like so different. Um, but I tend to really like, again, as I told y'all, the te teal is just, it's just such a beautiful color. Like, oh, it just adds like, <laughs> it makes me so excited. I don't know why, but I just love to do that. And then if I wanted to darken it or make it lighter, I could do that down here in luminance. I think I like that so far, yeah. So this is usually uh, like, I feel like in a lot of my photos that have skies, I tend to navigate towards this color of sky. And then what else do I want? I think I want to keep the sliders the same, leave that alone. And then if I wanted to, I always start, I don't know why I always start with, well, but yeah, I usually start with my shadows. I'm gonna want it to be a little warm in her skin, not too much, but. Another question in the chat. Do you have uh, any system or workflow to keep colors, tones consistent for multiple images? Mm. So yes. Yeah. So what I, if, especially if I'm editing like a set of photos, I always make sure that I am copying and pasting like my edits as I'm going. So um, if I was like in this set of photos that we'll edit tomorrow, if we get the chance, we can edit both of these. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever I do in Lightroom with this image, I want to make sure I copy and paste it as a starting point, even though I have to make slight adjustments because, you know, things change, not the exact, it wasn't shot the exact same place, or it was shot in the same location, but I might have turned the subject or something of that sort from the, you know, and, and they're not lit in the exact same way. Um, I'll definitely start off with making sure that whatever I decide as my foundation, I want to keep that consistent throughout mm -hmm. all of my edits. And then the same thing when I get into Photoshop, when I get to Photoshop and I have all my groups, and that's why I like to, as you guys saw me do, I like to put things into folders um, because oftentimes when I'm editing a large set of, or, you know, multiple photos, I want to be able to quickly duplicate those edits over to my the next photo um sometimes obviously i would have to make adjustments because if it was this photo and let's say i had another photo in this set and i knew i wanted to do something to the red i wanted to get the exact tone or color that i picked for the red but let's say she's standing over here if i co copied over the mask it's gonna turn this area it's gonna assume that she's standing in the same place so I would have to just kind of go in, erase and paint in her dress, but just making sure that I'm keeping my settings consistent throughout my um, editing workflow. So that's usually what I do. And that's why I think it's really important for me to try to stay as organized as I can. Um, that way I can, at least color wise, I can copy and paste those layers over. Makes sense. Let's see. So in the highlights, I'm going to somewhere in this range. No, nope, not that. It's a bit too much. Let's see. And usually also what I <clears throat> when I am using the color wheels, I tend to start out a little bit drastic. <laughs> I just so I can easily see like mm -hmm. what the colors are doing and then I can always pull back. Definitely. If I yeah, so that kind of helps me be able to be like, okay, I know I want something in this orangey, yellowish kind of area color of the of, 
aspect of the wheel, but I don't want it that much so I can easily pull back so it's not too much in the image. Um, instead of doing it this way where I can, my eyes can't really see much of the what I'm doing. I think I like that. So I think we're gonna stop here. So this is where what we've done thus far. So I did change the blue, but it's not like a drastic thing. I like the tone of it, so I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this over to Photoshop. Cool. Well, it's doing that. There's a question in the chat. Maybe you can answer that. Um, Olcar, Olcar is asking, based on what do you select your dominant color in the image? Mm. Based off of what? I don't know. I guess it just goes off of how I'm feeling. Um, I think when I, a lot of times when I'm shooting blue, shooting with um, like a sky, the blue is usually the dominant color. And that's the color I really want to be the focal point of the image. Um, and so I don't want anything to like be fighting with that. It's just more so like whatever I'm feeling. I don't really, I'll go in and knowing like these are the colors that I'm working with, but while I'm editing, I, that's when I decide, okay, I really want this color to take over. Like in the last photo, I really wanted that red to be like not too much, but a little bit fiery. Um, so I wanted that to stand out because it's, it's her dress. I want it to stand out. It's beautiful. It's the, the, the design of it is really great as well. Um, and so I think that's kind of how I go about that, but it's more so just how I'm feeling in the moment um, that kind of navigates me to what I will and will not do. Thank you for that. Of course. Thank y'all for the questions. Yeah. They are active in the chat today. <laughs> So I've duplicated my layer. Um, not gonna worry about um, any skin retouching. I am gonna do some dodging and burning. So I really like, again, like, you know, the highlights here, you can see her skin is glowing. So I wanna make that pop in mm -hmm. and whatnot. So more so focusing on the dodging. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna click on my brush. I'm gonna bring this opacity back down because I did bring it all the way up to 100 last time, but I don't want that. Let's start with 10 and then I can always reduce that. 10 might be too high, but we can see. So I'm just gonna come in here where it's already, so I, and I also like to just, again, follow where the light is natural, like where it naturally is hitting. So you can see like these highlights that are already here in her face. And I'm just kind of going over those components um, just to make them pop a bit more. And then if I wanted to dodge, I can come in here and I don't want that shadow to be darker. Okay, let's see what this looks like thus far. Subtle, but you can see how the highlights mm -hmm. pop there. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. We're gonna go ahead and go into selective color, my favorite place to start. <laughs> um, gonna focus on the reds first. Um, there is red in her dress, but I'm not, I, I like the red in her dress. I'm gonna keep it the same, not focusing on that. I wanna focus on her skin tone right now. And I'm gonna zoom this in a bit so I can see the, adjustments that we're making. So two uh, comments from Dogasm actually. One is a question first is, mm -hmm. wow, your work is beautiful and that's not even the right word. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and the question is, what is the difference between starting in camera raw uh, in Photoshop versus starting in Lightroom and then going into a Photoshop? That is a good question. I, from what, I don't know. and. Because you can, can let me know this. Want. Yeah, because I don't think that, I know that in, in my workflow, I tend to focus a lot on the color wheel, color grading tool. I can do that later on, but I don't think this is in camera raw or is there something similar to it in it, camera it's, raw? Yeah, so so the real difference is um, any in terms of editing a photo, Lightroom and camera are pretty much the same. There's pretty much, much difference? no difference. The, the real difference with Lightroom Classic is all the cataloging features. So for, for someone mm. like you who's working on multiple images of the same set, you might want to start there just because of organization and things like that. Camera Raw, if you're just editing one photo and that's mm. it, it'll it'll give you the same results. So it, it really it, depends on it. what you're doing. 
That's good to know. And that's good to know because I never really, um, I think when I look at my editing process and how I've grown up with my editing, I used to just do strictly Lightroom. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just used to going into Lightroom, doing all my adjustments there. And then when I introduced Photoshop um, into my workflow, it was just in addition to Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Hardly mm -hmm. ever am I just using Photoshop on itself, but it is nice to know that I could just go in and mm -hmm. use camera on that way as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when it comes to organization, it just keeps everything in one place and mm -hmm. keeps it simple. Saving is easy, especially when I'm doing like sets of photos. Um, I can easily, like I mentioned before, copy and paste things over and know that I don't have to like focus. I'm, I can make a lot of impacts to multiple photos instead of just focusing on one. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that is a good point. And that was a good question. Thank you for the question and for the compliment, uh, Dope Gasm. Yes, thank you. Yeah, let me keep this photo up. Let me see what that looks like in the greater photo. Yeah, Do you have any idea what your friend is, uh, the design is based off on the dress? No, no idea. I um, don't remember or know. He designed two different dresses for her. Mm. Um, and I don't know what the what the idea behind it or what they were going for um, or what kind of like inspired him to create this dress as it was, but it's just so unique, especially mm -hmm. here at the hips, like this kind of triangle. Um, I absolutely love it. It was just so, it was very difficult. I will say what the shooting day, um, trying to get her to this spot change. I think we had her change once we got to the mountain because there was no way we could just like drag this dress on her while mm -hmm. we were walking. So we like walked over, we got her changed. Um, and then I had to get her climbing up the rocks, which was difficult, but it was well worth the, the photo. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Let's see. So I think I am good there. So you can see it did impact the reds in her dress, but I'm not mad at that. So I'm going to leave that as is. It's going to be too tedious to go and do anything else. Let's see. Do I want to do anything to my heels? And sometimes again, I just will play with the sliders and see if anything is done that I like. Mm -hmm. um, mm, no, I think I just might go to my, bring this up and that is well, yeah. Earlier you mentioned that you are Nigerian. Is that where you were born? No, so I was actually, I'm first generation American. Uh -huh. So I was born nice. here in Phoenix, um, but my parents were born in Nigeria. So when I say I'm Nigerian, I I, <laughs> I never, when people ask, oh, where are you from? I'm so used to just saying, oh, Nigeria, because yeah. that's where I'm, that's right. what I claim. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But then um, people were like, oh, when did you come to the States? I'm like, oh, wait, no, 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 no. So <laughs> I was born in the States, yeah. but I claim, um, I, I that's why I often say like I'm Nigerian American, so I'm claiming both, mm -hmm, um, sure. both both cultures because they're they're it's what makes me who I am. Awesome. Have you gotten a, an opportunity to travel out there? Yes. So awesome. I I went once when I was young, so when I was maybe like two three, but I've gone maybe four times now in the past couple of years. So oh, awesome. I, last time I was there was. 2019 right before okay, the pandemic right, yeah. um and i wanted to go i planned i remember in my adult hot life i said okay i'm gonna be going back if i can once a year but worst case every two years so i made mm -hmm. that decision back in i think it was 2016 or 2017 mm -hmm. and so i was doing that <laughs> um i think one year i even went back twice <laughs> wow um, and then the pandemic happened and i've been stuck since but i do plan on going um Back in maybe March this May this year, um, I think my parents want to renew their vows, so we're gonna go back and oh, do the whole so ceremony. Um, and then I'm gonna go back in December because December is usually the time everybody goes back for Christmas, all the festival celebrations and whatnot. So that's my plan um, as far as returning. And I usually go to my home state, which is a Quaiam state, um, to stay um, and just kind of see family, uncles, cousins, etc. It's a good time to reconnect. Cool. Viola saying in the chat, going in September. Are you from Nigeria, Viola? Let us know. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that, I think she is. That's, I, I recognize the name. So she should be Nigerian. Cool. 
So, yeah, I've uh, never been to Nigeria, but uh, one of my best friends is from just basically next door from Togo, and I really? had an opportunity to go out there for really? about a week. Yeah. It's, oh wow! How did you enjoy it? It was it was really cool. I mean, the the only downside is I don't speak French, so mm -hmm. it was a little difficult to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. But it was a great experience, and, oh. and I enjoyed it a lot. Everyone was super nice. It was great. Oh, I and love it it's you know anytime you travel is great to go with people who are from there so mm -hmm. you know i was just hanging out with my friend's family for basically a week and it was a great mm -hmm. time oh yeah when i first started i think this year when i go in december i want to take a solo trip or maybe go with friends but my parents are just now in the space where they're like okay we'll let you go by yourself <laughs> before it was like i was always going with my mom my dad and my siblings um but my favorite thing and i'll just pull this up real quickly just because it's like my favorite work when i went back in i think 18 and 19 i really focused on shooting oh, cool. while i was there um just because i really loved i think that in general people have a perspective uh, perspective of what they think africa as a whole looks like um mm -hmm. and i think when i was traveling back there's just so much vibrancy and beauty and mm -hmm. like the colors like me being obsessed with colors i wanted to capture that so i went back and I did a lot of street photography the first that in 2018 2019 I got to like these were kids from my mom's secondary school so we mm -hmm. went back to see her at the school that she had attended mm -hmm. um and I was carrying around my camera and <laughs> the kids were like oh like can you take our picture um and so it was just really cool to it's always nice to go back and give back in the sense and just capture your culture mm -hmm. um so this is, I'm hoping that every trip that I go back, I can continue to capture and just be able to show the beauty that is uh, my state of Kwaibom, but also just Nigeria as a whole. Awesome. So that's like my favorite, like to my, to this day, when I think of like mm -hmm. the, the art that means the most, it's, it's that. By the way, uh, Biola is indeed from Nigeria. Yep. <laughs> super cool and yeah that's that's kind of why i was asking of the pattern if you knew where the pattern came from i was just wondering if there was some sort of tie to your friend's culture mm -hmm. yeah i'm not too sure i'm sure there's some kind of tie there but and i can't remember where he's from because he's not nigerian i can't remember what um country he's from um but i'm not too sure as far as the pattern or, or, or where and i'm sure there is because a lot of the times when we're making african attire there's a connection to the pattern or just sometimes they're just beautiful patterns that you can turn into beautiful gowns as well. Mm -hmm. So I think I like this photo thus far. There's not much. Do I want to do anything to the whites? Let's see. So this is more so just the whites in the dress. Trying to bring that white back or what are you trying to do? I don't want to bring that white oh, back. Oh, you do not. <laughs> okay, you do not. Got it. I thought to I kind of want to add a little mm -hmm. so if I wanted to bring that I could bring that white back oh I was just asking I <laughs> I'm trying to see now because my attention wasn't to because I don't like this yellow at the bottom there I mean I can take that out I like this as this is actually and I actually didn't even bring it it's not even a pure white it still has like a little tint of blue down mm -hmm. here I feel like that's often like that's just my signature. There's something about adding colors to your whites that just gives you that like vintage mm -hmm. um, look that I really, really love. Then I'm gonna come in here again, see what I can really like to make this a little dramatic here. see how many photos that you get with this dress on her a lot <laughs> a lot I mean, I, we took a lot i don't even think i could even i think especially because um one i think i was nervous it being um i always love to i think my favorite part about photography is also being able to take the photos of like really monumental moments in my friends lives so, you know, for example, I went out to Dallas last week and took po portraits for my friend who, you know, her, she's pregnant, she's going to be birth soon. So I was able to take her maternity photos. And my friend here, Natalie, she's given, she was, uh, at this point, she was engaged to get married. 
Um, and so it made me really, really excited, but also nervous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I feel like when I'm shooting with my friends, I overkill. Yeah. I'm like taking so, I can't even tell you how many it took. Um, I don't mm-hmm. edit as much as I take, obviously, but I overshoot. So that way I make sure I caught the best <laughs> photos of that I could. Sometimes I go back and look at, I probably had like 10 or 15 images that look like this, like <laughs> that, you know, I wasn't going to do anything with, or maybe had like a slight difference in how I turned her. Right. Um, but I can like, let me get as much as I can now because I can't call you back to redo a shoot. <laughs> I can just, I can always delete photos, but I can't retake them. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I'm loving the teal. Yeah. It's the money maker. Just... It's the money maker for me, you know? And let me see. So if I go and you can see what we've done so far with this. Yeah. So I really like the teal that's in the sky. Mm -hmm. I added a little bit of fade into the shadows around her face, which I really like. So you can see. Well, am I clicking on it? There we go. There we go. I'm getting a little lag on my end. Um, But I really like that there and then her skin is very glowy and 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 i love the tone of her skin as well so this is looking stunning to me thus far i do want to come into channel mixer and see if i want to do anything in here to add like i oh that's beautiful Ooh, just to reduce that a bit and then I'm gonna come in here and so I just went to channel mixer, went to my blues and brought the slider down a little bit. And I like the, the tone and added to the overall photo. And I'm gonna just, I don't think it should have done much to her skin, but I'm still gonna come in and erase that. So we don't have that layer yeah. impacting her skin. Oh, I don't wanna get spillover. And See, while you're is... doing that, let me, there's a question in the chat that maybe you can enter it as you work on, on her arm. Mm-hmm. Mel is asking, well, first of all, saying wonderful work, Adara. So refreshing to see your projects. How did the self-portrait Sunday project change the uh, way that you do your work now? That is a huge question because it changed. <laughs> it was a game changer. Okay. Um, so self-portrait Sunday, um, they really went to look to my work because wow. Um, well, well, the show is now, now I'm curious, yes. what, is, what is a self-portrait Sunday? So self-portrait Sunday is a project that I started at the beginning of the pandemic. So this okay. was April, 2020, where I just focused on, especially because we weren't able to, I mean, everyone was like basically in lockdown. So I wasn't shooting with anybody else, but I wanted to make sure that I was still creative. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started shooting self portraits and I went from never shooting myself, especially as a photographer, I feel mm-hmm. like we oftentimes shoot other people. We focus on capturing them well, but we never really turn the lens on ourselves. And so I really wanted to um, just kind of just start taking self portraits. So if I scroll all the way to the end here, you'll see the first self portrait that I took and was just like they were simple they were just Mm -hmm. nice little photos I wanted to kind of get dressed because I had been sitting in sweats every day (laughs) and I felt really gross so I wanted to feel radiant again and then you can just see as we continue that I started to introduce color more um I started to place this is where like kind of like that dream like Mm -hmm. effects and airy look started to be introduced in my work especially with the sparkles too um and you can just see, I just challenged myself to shoot in different settings with different colors um, to see what I could do, especially with my editing. Um, and so this impacted my work so, so much because I felt like I had challenged myself to mm-hmm. look at editing differently. Um, and just really, I again, dealing with my skin tone and different with different um, colors, backgrounds, et cetera. Um, and I really, I think this is when I felt like I had more of that, like I, my color grading just kind of came to life a bit more. Mm-hmm. And so these, I, over the course of now, two, almost, basically two years, I've taken all of these portraits. A lot of these were taken in 2020 into 2021. Um, but it was just a, a, really a challenge of my, just challenging myself creatively, mm-hmm. um, and then challenging myself with coloring and grading. And it has 
it's been a huge impact to my workflow. Um, this is when I was like being able to challenge myself with learning new things or playing more, shooting more with shadows. Like instead of just shooting in perfect lighting situations, you know, mm -hmm. play with harsh lighting. Um, and so that's when I started to do that. I'm like, okay, now I can focus on when I have a subject, I don't have to always, I don't have to be afraid of the sun. Mm -hmm. You know, I can really play with shadows cause it'll give you a different feel and vibe to your image. Um, and so, yeah, that's a great question because it impacted my, my workflow incredibly awesome. as far as what I look for or how I plan for my shoots too. And just, and also how I edit them. Awesome. And thank you, Sam, for posting the link to the self-portrait Sunday project in the chat. So if you're interested yes. in, in checking it out, click on that link. And if you scroll up, I'm sure you'll see, uh, Idara's Instagram as well. Yes. Thank y'all so much. And that was a really good question because I'm telling you during the pandemic, as, as I'm sure a lot of us, it was, a, it's, it, we're still in it, <laughs> um, but it was a very difficult um, transition for me. And I just gone from like always shooting with other people to not being able to shoot with anybody. And um, I really wanted to make sure that I was staying creative and still on top of my craft. Mm -hmm. And so it was really, really impactful in that sense. Beautiful. So I think I really love this image as is. I really liked that channel mixer that just gave it, let me pull it back up so I can see what that did. So you can just see how like it added, it's just that the overall tones are just so rich and I liked how it complements your skin. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the overall before and after, again, the teal is just so powerful. <laughs> One thing I will do here as well, I'm gonna zoom in, adding my signature sparkle cause she does have a ring. <laughs> and let's see if I can zoom in with this trackpad. Let's see, yes, there we go. Gotta Scroll make that up. ring bling. Yes, we gotta make that ring bling. So we're gonna go into our brush tool. We're still on white and click on the star there. And I'm gonna increase this to maybe like, let's do 70. And we're gonna make that ring bling. Yeah, I'm gonna, let's make it bling more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mel responded, thanks for answering Adara. Super insightful to hear uh, the impact regarding Absolutely. the self-portrait Sunday. Yes, that's a, a great question. So thank you so much for asking. It's crazy because I went from like never shooting myself to like becoming mm -hmm. my favorite subject. Um, <laughs> so I always, I don't shoot self-portraits as often as I um, want to now, just because um, it, it got to the point where like I was, I felt like I was I started the project because it was giving me a sense of like, it was keeping me sane, essentially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. keeping me calm. Yeah. And so it was really nice in that case, but I didn't also, I also wanted to make sure that I was never doing it because, oh, it was getting me, oh, there was a lot of attraction that I was getting too, because people liked the idea of a photographer taking self portraits that are really mm -hmm. creative and, and stuff like that. And so I, it, I wanted to make sure that as soon as I stopped enjoying it will be the moment that I mm -hmm. stopped shooting. Um, or and you're still doing and you're still doing the project. I'm still doing the project, but I do it when I feel like it. So it's not okay. like I was at the time of the pandemic. I was shooting self portraits every single Sunday. Mm -hmm. So it was to the point where like my workflow would be to literally plan. So I would start. It would take up my entire day. Um, as far as I, in the morning, I'd be like, okay, what do I want to shoot today? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I may have planned ahead if I wanted to pick up certain fabrics for backdrops, mm -hmm. etc. Um, but I just kind of get up and I'm like, okay, let me play around with my hair. What I want to do for like a hair, my hairstyle or play around with my makeup and watch videos while I'm doing it. So it was just really nice and me time essentially. Right. Right. And then, um, I just would like shoot, shoot my, uh, my self portrait. I would edit it and then I would post it on my Instagram that same day. So I did all of that every single Sunday for like almost a year. And then it was like, okay, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I've been doing this a lot. Um, and I, I just, now I just shoot self portraits when I'm in the mood to do so. Let's see, I think, make sure that's clean there. Yeah, beautiful. So 
I think that is all I want to do there. I'm gonna bring this down and merge these two together so we can look at that again. So that is that dodging and burning that we did around her mm. arms and face and then our overall edit. So I'm gonna save that and we'll send it into Lightroom. Might take a moment. <laughs> it's like a waiting game. Are you coming to where you at? And let us know in the chat if you have any other questions. We've been getting a lot of good ones today. Yes. Thank you all so much for your questions. So I'm going to copy these edits. So this was our before and that's our after. Nice. So I'm going to pull, let me pull these up. So you can see how different that was. I cropped it in because again, I wanted to make sure that I still had that negative space, but making sure that she wasn't, that she wasn't fighting with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I like the balance between the space and her dress and her. I think the other thing that I may have done in the photo, original photo, if I remember correctly, I might have liquefied her dress hmm. um, down here to pull this out. Let me see if I did that or if I like that. So I might go to fill, no, the filter, yes, filter, liquefy. And then I could use the brush and this is for the size of the, I'm covering it. Yes, this is the size of the breast. And then I could just kind of pull mm -hmm. the dress out a little bit, but also wanting to be mindful, making sure I'm not, no, I think that's fine. So I could pull, we all stop there. So, no, I don't like that. Yeah, see, that's why we make it. That's why we make a separate layer. <laughs> Work <non -effectively. laughs> so we could just so we could just delete that. But I do really like this before and after. Um, as y'all can see again, the teals are a huge thing for me, um, and I just usually play with like. If I'm, if I'm targeted to, I'm like, okay, do I want it darker? Do I want it brighter? Um, what do I want to do? I really like that we added the, mm -hmm. color, the the channel mixer on this photo. I think it just added to the overall, like the overall vibe of the image. So those are those two thus far. So question in the chat, any tips yes. on guiding your models on posing? Oh, yes. So um, the one thing that I really love to do um, is I have a, when, when I go into a shoot, especially, um, shooting with feet well whether they're they're female or, ma or male I, I try to have some kind of like um, mood board that way I can like so maybe I went to Pinterest and I saved a bunch of random poses that I really liked whether it's for like an engage especially when I'm shooting with like couples or two people I'll mm -hmm. look for poses that I like that will complement each other um, so that way I can give that direction so I always come up with some kind of like mood board that I have on my phone saved so I can refer back to it the other thing that I usually like to do in the case of this photo on the right here, um, I like, you know, we have a car here, so I want to be able to utilize that as for her posing. So I just instructed her, you know, just lean on it. That way, you know, her hip can come out more. I always tell um, when I'm shooting with women, I always have them bring their left foot out, um, the left leg out, just to bring a little bit of leg and add some more like, just like shape to the body as well. Um, so I tend to do that a lot. I'm always very focused on, um, it's always important to like give that direction as far as chin up, chin down. So they know you, they, they know you're, you're, you're fine with the placement of their head. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing as well as I really love to shoot, um, if, especially when I'm shooting with a model and she's standing and there's no like car that she can lean on. A lot of it is in like her arms. So I tend to really like in this case, and I'm demonstrating with my hands <laughs> but i really like a lot of like the the doing things with your arms like one arm up one down mm -hmm. especially in this photo it just kind of adds i just like the shape that it added mm -hmm. to the overall photo so um i'll do a lot of this and just have them move around and play and then if i especially when i see something that i like i might stop and direct them back to it 
but I always kind of, I think it's important to give your model one, a direction, but I'll let them also feel comfortable with just moving around and just make creating an atmosphere that they feel comfortable in. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes they might, she might just move her hand up and do something. And I'm like, oh, I loved how you did that. And she's like, well, I don't know what I did. <laughs> so I'll have to direct her back to that. Right. Um, so that those are probably, that's probably what I do. I always come in with some kind of mood board, but then again, making sure that I am um, allowing them to feel comfortable and just giving some tips as far as, okay, this is what we can start off with. Not that we have, this is the end pose, but we can start off with this and then just feel comfortable. I might have some music playing and have them dancing around or something. And then in, within that, I'll say, okay, I liked that. I saw something that I liked. I can kind of um, tell them to pose back into and make sure I capture it. Nice. That was a really good question. You guys have been killing, they've been killing it with the, the questions in the chat today. Yeah, thank you for all the good questions and keep them coming. Yes, please do. So we have been on a rock and roll. I might have to find some more images for us to edit tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but we can go into this set of images um, from the shoot that I did. I showed you guys called Brother. Mm -hmm. um, I have these two because again I felt that they're similar with like the green and the grass um, and then again a huge part of my photos like I mentioned before is just skin and so I want it to look vibrant I want it to look lifelike and just like the melon to quote-unquote pop I want melon popping mm. in my photos um, I think in this photo actually I may have used uh, a preset I did use a preset um, that I created so I need to figure out what I did and this pre you know what? and we're gonna challenge ourselves no nope. erase that you are we're just gonna yeah. start for fresh <laughs> yes i like that i like that no presets today <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna come in again i i usually tend to navigate towards either it's usually either standard or faithful do i oh no i actually kind of like neutral in there so let's do neutral but yeah, I love the camera profiles because then you can just, it just kind of helps set the mood for where I'm good. I might go with my image or just, it's a nice starting point. So mm -hmm. I, I like the neutrals in this photo. And, and this is an image that I'll probably aim to keep. Um, I don't want to make it too, I don't want to make it warm because I feel like that's contradicting where we're starting. So I still want to keep it as cool as it currently mm -hmm. is. Um, so I'm going to keep keep that where it is I'm not gonna move the temperature and I really want it to be kind of like this darker kind of I want it to be a bit darker than what we shot previously or what we edited previously so we'll start there I'm gonna bring up the shadows because I don't want to miss the details in his shirt yeah same thing with my clarity then I bring up those. Mm, not really. Just a little bit. Yeah, I like that so far. And then I think in this photo, um, I don't oftentimes when I'm shooting with green, I don't oftentimes keep the green this color. I just don't like it. <laughs> um, and so I might, I tend to go for more of like a yellowy, orangey green kind of thing, you know, so that that adds a bit more um, just flavor to the image. So I'm not gonna do that now. I think I'll save that for Photoshop. Let's see, do I wanna add, and I didn't really add anything to my midtones in my images previously. I tend to like not do this often. I think I'm gonna, oh, I actually like that. So I'm gonna keep that there and let's see. Okay, so I like the yellows there. Of course I do, I like my images warm, but we don't want it to, just a little bit. Yeah, there. And then. Oh, Gassam is asking in the chat. Thank you so much for sharing your process with us. Um, the question is, how do you send files to your clients? So I send files. So what I'll do is I'll go through my shoot and edit everything. <clears throat> I, my exporting settings are pretty standard. I just make sure that it's, they're always JPEGs, the quality is high, resolution's at 300, and then I export it into um, a folder within the original folder. So then mm -hmm. that way it all goes to one place. 
And then I deliver my photos um, using either two sites. I used to use Pixie Set a lot. So that was a site that I um, used to use to deliver photos. I use PicTime now, no real reason why I just wanted to try it out. Oh, PicTime I really liked because if I was shooting weddings or um, any kind of photos that people might want printed, I like that PicTime gives you, I think there's an automatic option for people to print their photos or create gal or create mm. like photo books and stuff like that. So usually I like to use PicTime or Pixie Set because it creates a full gallery. And I feel like it creates an experience for the user mm -hmm. or for the for the for whoever the subject is. Instead of me sending it, let's say in Dropbox and they're just looking at like the 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 icons, mm -hmm. I really want them to be able to see a full gallery where they can really experience the photos. So I really love Pixie uh, Pick Time because you'll have like a nice little like kind of cover photo that mm -hmm. says like I'll have the date, maybe if it's a project, the name of the project or the name of the subject. And then you can just really scroll through and see the whole experience of the images. So um, those are the, the two websites that I use for delivering photos that I would definitely recommend um, just because I feel like when people see like a full gallery, it's like, whoa, like this is so cool. Mm -hmm. um, you really get to take in everything at once. Yeah, I really like the comment of making it an experience for them. That's, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, because I just feel like, you know, I don't like I want you to be hit at once. Like, whoa, mm -hmm. like this is so great. <laughs> Instead of like yeah. seeing like, you know, especially I think as well, like it's more aesthetically pleasing too, um, opposed to like me sending things on like Dropbox or something where it's just like, a folder with all these images saved, you can really create a gallery for them that feels really specific and catered to them. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like it makes it feel more personal as well. So I think thank you for that, the question. Yes, thank you. So that is what we'll, we'll do so far in Lightroom. I am going to copy these over and then again, I would have pasted these over here, but you can see obviously that like, I don't like how I might bring this down. So essentially, again, my point just being, if I'm editing two photos of the same set, I'm just gonna copy and paste my my settings over. That way I can make sure that I'm starting from the right place and not making, yeah, I can just, I can always make adjustments to um, my settings, but I wanna make sure they're relatively the same. So we're gonna bring this into Photoshop. I think this one Photoshop will do a lot more. Well, we'll do the same kind of workflow we've been doing, but I think it'll be cool to see. I want it to be just kind of a moodier image. Mood is the word, moody was the um, word that I'm looking for. So instead of something really bright and airy and vintage, we're gonna go for something a little darker and moody with these images. So I actually am gonna do some skin editing, just a tad. Mm. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. Actually, yes, I am. There's some small things I wanna. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Yes, you are, Idar. <laughs> it, it also sounds to me like right now that you're editing, it's like almost like we're not here listening to you. And this is like the actual conversations you're having with your head as you're editing alone in your <laughs> office or studio. Exactly. That's, that's so. I'll literally, I'll sit here and I'll talk to myself like, ah, do I want to do that? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> take that out. I'm gonna come back here to mix a brush cool. tool and take out this. And again, for those that don't know, in the chat, what what is frequency separation? Like, what what's going on here? So yes, yeah, so frequency separation is a technique that can be used for skin editing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use it as often as I used to, just because sometimes. Um, Unless like like I really want need to do a lot of cleanup, but if the skin looks, I usually like to keep it as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. But essentially, frequency separation is really great because you can separate the skin into two layers, where you have like the actual like skin, um, and then you have like the texture of the skin. So the color of the skin and like the texture of it in two separate layers, um, and it really allows you to kind of go in and make something and edit the skin in a more realistic way, opposed mm -hmm. to just like blurring. The mm -hmm. skin and making it not and removing all that texture so that's mm -hmm. what i really love about the texture aspect because i if i click on this i could come in and i use my patch tool and i could come in and like take if let's say there was like a pimple or something i can really come and copy the texture from somewhere else in his skin mm -hmm. and so that way it's it maintains the natural look of it opposed to me the when i first started doing skin editing i would go in and like copy i would do this so i would like patch a large portion of the mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. 
and then I would come up to to filter and I would blur it, like right. gaussian blur it, and then I bring it down. Right. Think, okay, yeah, there we go. No, right. <laughs> you just blur the skin. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that way, because now you're removing all that texture and what mm -hmm. makes it really lively. And I think that's a part of a part of when I think of like cinematic photos and like I think I want my photos to look like so just really lifelike and, and realistic so especially something like this i want you to feel like you're almost sitting there with him so i want him to still look like mm -hmm. an, an, a regular person i don't want it to look so right. polished mm -hmm. to where you feel like you're separated from the image right um so that's really a big part of so like in this that's why i was going back and forth with, am i gonna do it am i not mm -hmm. i'm not gonna do it because i really i like the you know this mark here in his forehead and i i like the texture of his skin already mm -hmm. so i just i, I feel like makes it keeps it looking really right. realistic so but i just had a little there was a little like white mark on his head that mm -hmm. i wanted to take out so i just did that so yeah I, I don't know how you feel about it but it sounds like we're pretty much the same what i like to do is i don't i don't like to remove anything that's part of them you know mm -hmm. even if it's a scar or, or something but if it's like you said a pimple that's going to be mm -hmm. gone next week that's not part of who they are absolutely so i would remove that um but yeah and unless obviously the person signing the checks is like no i want them to look <laughs> like exactly. this you know exactly and you know the thing is is like that that's exactly how i am because a couple of years ago i was editing one of my friends and she has like a scar right here on her forehead mm -hmm. and i and i took it out i just mm -hmm. was editing and i took it out and i sent her the photo and she's like wait where's my scar yeah. yeah so i think that those are the things that make that person who they are and mm -hmm. and you want to i i still want them to be able to identify with themselves in the photo mm -hmm. i don't want them to feel like the image that i created and edited looks like someone completely different mm -hmm. um because that's when you get like the oh like that doesn't even look like wow like you made me look da, 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 that mm -hmm. doesn't even look like me i don't right. like those comments because i'm like dang i didn't do a good job because this image should be a reflection of what you are obviously if there's a pimple or something like that and your skin is struggling i can take care of that no problem and still making sure that i'm not making you look airbrushed i don't mm -hmm. want you to look like you're not, that's not, not the style that I essentially go for. Mm -hmm. Makes total sense. Yes, but I think it's, like you said, like keeping the things that make them them. Um, because once you start to remove and then they don't look like themselves and they will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my friend called and she was like, what did you do? Where did my mark go? My, um, my um, scar? Uh, scar, yeah, she's like, where did my scar go? And I was like, Oh, like you wanted me to keep that? She's like, yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? <laughs> so there's a question on frequency separation by Dopegasm. When doing frequency separation, how do you paint it? I feel like I'm not blending right. Mm. So that's a good question. So if I come down here and I'm going to turn this layer off. So again, um, the painting that I would do would be on the skin copy of 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 the of this action and so if i scroll in that's more so if again if i wanted to like paint over a color that might be one area over somewhere else i think it's really important to be mindful of your of how you're moving and this is why it's, when i'm doing frequency separation i tend to like to do it more when i'm on the ipad because i have more control over where my um where I'm applying that pressure to, opposed to if I'm with my mouse, sometimes I can get carried away. Um, so if I'm kind of come here, let's say I'm on, I'm on a decent sized brush, I'm gonna keep it here. So I have it on the mixer brush tool and essentially this is just kind of blending colors together. I don't wanna get too crazy because then you can see if I'm like doing all of this, it's impacting the whole image mm -hmm. or is it impact, you know, something that might be, I can't take what's over here and now bring it over here because now that doesn't look realistic. So I think it's just kind of being precise and starting in one small area and making little light strokes. So if I want to blend this area that's a little darker with what's up here, I'm not going to do this, but I'll just kind of between the two layers, just start to make small strokes that will ultimately kind of blend that out. So it's just more so targeted small like strokes that I use or like small rotations. So in that way, um, my blending is a little bit more clean um, mm -hmm. instead of like doing something that's like really big, like, oh, okay, I want to blend this all together. 
and I'm doing all of this. And then now you're looking at his forehead and that's what it looks, you don't want mm -hmm. that. We definitely don't want that. <laughs> definitely not. I'm gonna come back here to the dodging and burning. Mar said, your tips are amazing, Adara, as well as your viewpoints. Hey. Thanks. Of course. Of course. I really love um, having this conversation because I don't, some, this is really cool because sometimes I know why I do what I do, but I don't know how to say <laughs> what I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you guys are resonating with the tips because these are things, these are conversations I have in my head. I'm like, oh, if I do this, this should, you know, oh, let me not take out that scar because this doesn't look like them anymore. Like these are things I say to myself. Beautiful. So I'm going to come in and dodge. Just a wee bit. Cool. So his face just comes out a bit more. And then I'm going to start. I like the skin tone. So I'm going to skip the yellows and the red. I'm going to go to the greens and see what we can do here. So I'm going to pull back because I don't want. Nah, and not that way. This way. So you can see, oh, that looks so beautiful. Yeah, I like that tone. I'm gonna add some more yellow in there. Yep. And if I wanted to take it a step further, I could go into my yellows now. Since that green has more of a yellow tint, I should mm -hmm. be able to come in yeah. and impact that more. So I really like, I think this is a tone that I went with in my original image of that sort now you can see you guys it's, it's impacting his skin which we do not want so i'm going to come in here and just erase all of that and this no. is indeed looking more cinematic yep exactly <laughs> it's looking more oh it just makes it pop more and I, i'm telling you guys if you want the one way that i started to i think what really impacted my editing more was i would watch movies and I would literally see how like the tones and how cinematic mm -hmm. things would look in movies. I'm like, how can I replicate that in an mm -hmm. image? Yeah. Um, and then I did a, all of these, watched all of these YouTube videos that showed me these different tools. I try to learn a little bit about color, um, mm -hmm. but if there's just so much that you can do that just makes your image look like just by impacting the, the greens in this photo, that looks mm -hmm. so much more cinematic. It complements the skin very well. Um, and it just kind of looks more like it's straight out of a movie, straight out of a film almost. Definitely. Any uh, hitting gems in Photoshop or Lightroom? Well, I guess we're looking at one now, selective color. Yes, that's a, that is, when I tell y'all, that is my, like, I don't, that, that's my everything. <laughs> <laughs> Once I learned about selective color, it was like game over. Um, and then I would say another hidden gem would be that channel mixer. I just really mm -hmm. loved what it did in the other image. Um, I cannot explain it. One day I'll learn channel mixer, <laughs> <laughs> but I cannot explain it right now. But I just love how you can, again, still get that like a cinematic look with your image, with the tones that it'll add to your image. But I can't explain it to save my, to save my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another question in the chat is, what is your trick to keeping brown skin tones so true to real color? Mm. So um, I think referring back, to, so I think one thing that I'm trying to do more so now is really understanding like undertones. And so when people have like, like for me, I, I think when I, I have more so like I always refer it back to like my makeup, right? So there's not like a one size fits all, like there's different foundations that have different undertones for different skin types. And so when I'm editing, it's not a one size fits all. So I have to be mindful of the person's natural undertones. Like, are they more so, do they have yellow undertones? Do they have red undertones? Whatever that might look like and making sure I'm keeping that consistent. I don't want someone who has red undertones now looking really orangey yellowish because now that doesn't complement what they naturally look like so i think that's one thing i try to be mindful of and then i love to come into um 
channel when I come into like a channel mix or selective selective color, um, I focus on the red and the yellows and trying to make them balance because again, when you look at skin in general, you have a lot of reds, you have a lot of yellows, oranges in your skin. And so just looking at those targeted colors and just playing around with the sliders and making sure that you're getting the most accurate kind of color, um, but like being able to just kind of see how you can balance the three colors out to get what you want. Um, and I always love to refer back to the original photo as well, um, because this is what, you know, being able to say, okay, this is what they look like. I don't want him looking too orangey, but I can try to make sure I'm maintaining his natural look throughout the entire um, photo. So hopefully that helps. I feel like, I don't know if that was a direct answer, but <laughs> That's kind of how I go about that. And I also, especially when I'm dealing with darker um, skin tones, I always love to, when I come into selective color and I'm let's say I'm in reds or something, I love to add like some blacks in there too, just to add that extra oomph in the skin. I feel like it, yeah, <laughs> I feel like it adds a little bit more dimension um, in the skin as well. Cool. So we just have a, a few more minutes. So is there anything else that you want to show in the last minute or so? And then we're going to have to uh, wave goodbye. No, I think let's stop here. I think Perfect. this is like a good stopping point. I think we and, did a lot in, and we got through two and a half photos. So <laughs> yeah. And tomorrow we're going to continue with this series or what yes. are we doing tomorrow? So, so people could, could look forward to it. Yeah. So today, tomorrow we will go continue through this series. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll edit um, this photo. I'll also edit this one as well so you guys can see how I try to, with that, and that question of keeping things consistent, I think that's a really great point. So we can talk about that, especially when you're doing your projects and you have multiple photos and you want the whole project to look consistent. Mm -hmm. um, there's some different tools I use there. And then we'll probably edit this one. I might have a different photo that might have a different vibe that we can edit as well. Sounds good. And also, um, where can we find you on Instagram? What's your handle? Yes. Um, so my Instagram is, oh yeah, it's ID. So O-H-Y-E-A-H-I-T-S-I-D-Y. So you guys can find me on Instagram there. Uh, my website is idaraekpo.com. In case you have any other questions or comments, you guys can reach out to my, I have a contact me um, button. So you can reach out to me there and I would love to continue the discussion. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Adara, everybody in the chat for joining us. It was a great stream. Thank you so much for the questions. We look forward uh, with, on being with you again tomorrow. Um, please stay tuned. We have Julia Vaca coming in with uh, uh, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, where she's going to be working on complex shapes, I believe. It's going to be a great stream, so make sure that you stick around for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, thank you, Adara. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.